All right, guys, I am back in Idaho at Deviant Race Parts. Uh, I was thoroughly impressed with what happened in Coos Bay with Brent Gilliam's car. This one just to get settled in and, and make this happen. Holy cow, Brent sending it in yes. the Can-Am Max with the Fiberworks body. He is driving away, but that was a hard hit. And uh, figured I needed some parts just like his. So we are here and we're gonna see what's going on. Who's that guy? Oh, hey, Zach. How's what's going, going on? Dude? How's life been? Oh, it's been going good, dude. Make yeah? How about you? Not too bad. Just here to check out some new parts. We saw Brent over in Coos Bay just send his X3 to the moon. Oh, yeah. And slam that thing down to the ground so hard. And he drove away with it with your guys' hardware on the That's front right. end. Yep. And I think I need some of those. So we're going to go look at some of those parts right now. Well, Chris is ready for you out back, man. Chris? Go? All right. Yeah, Chris is ready. Back. All right. We'll go check him out. Yep. See ya. Whoa, what do we got over here? Chris, how's it going, man? How's it going? All How's right. life at Deviant treating you? Oh, can't complain. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, good. just so everybody knows, because uh, I think you missed out on the last time we were here. Yeah. Uh, let everybody know who you are and what you do here. Uh, Chris Roskup. Uh, just pretty much, I don't know, people say uh, I do a little of everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you got your hands in the manufacturing of man, all these crazy yeah. parts. Yeah, manufacturing, that we're gonna... a little bit of the R&D, um, yeah. day to day stuff, things like that. I mean, you know, wear a lot of hats around here. <laughs> <laughs> Small company, everybody does a little bit of everything, That's right? right? That's right. So I wanted to come over and check out some of your guys' hardware because we were here last time. We got the radius rods sure. for the rear end of the razor, but I saw Brent Gilliam send his X3 to the moon in Coos Bay. Yeah. And that thing slapped harder than anything I've ever felt. I felt him hit the ground well, in my sure. seat. Yeah. And I was 100 feet away from him. Yeah. So uh, he drove away from that incident, no problem. Pretty and impressive. he was running all of your lower A arms, all your different hardware. So I want what he has. Is that cool? Yeah, man. Let's do it. All right. Let's talk about the front arms. You yeah. guys have some arms here. These are, uh, what series are these? What do you guys call these? Uh, this is just our standard series arm. We uh, don't have a specific name for them by any means, but this is just our our uh, regular arm. It's an uh, inch and a quarter DOM on these. Um, we got your CNC ball joint block. So just so people understand what's going on here. So we have our upper for like a razor, what we're yep. doing here. We have the upper arm and we have the lower arm. Correct. Uh, upper arm's gonna have your shock mount here. It's fully boxed yeah, um, on the inside. So a lot of people always talk about box versus radius uh, type hardware. Right. You guys have gone with the 120 wall uh, hardware here and then boxing where it's critical. Right. Um, is there any reason why you guys go with that versus like a box setup? I mean, there's a lot less welding. There's a ton less welding. It's a lot of, it, there's a lot of manufacturing in it. Um, I can't say we're not going to do it in the future. Um, for what these are and what we've seen them do, can't really justify going to a complete box setup. I mean, your price point on a box setup is going to be way higher than way, a way radius higher. setup, right? Yeah. So this uh, cuts down on manufacturing time, keeps costs down, but provides most of the same strength and, and durability that like a straight up box TIG welded setup would do. Correct. I mean, they're both an extremely strong arm. I think there's some aesthetics in the boxed arm. I mean, some people like to do or some, uh, some people like boxed. Um, and box is traditionally a lot heavier. Oh yeah. Very so, heavy. Yep. I mean, we're not talking about light arms here today, no, like, by, no, any means, by any means, compared to a, a, an OE yeah. arm, but uh, but they are definitely not as heavy as like a boxed arm setup. No, boxed arm setups are probably three, four times heavier than these guys. Right. Uh, I mean, these are significantly heavier than these. I mean, we're talking what, 085 wall, 065 <laughs> two, you know? Right. Um, significantly heavier so so let's talk about this so we got the 120 wall arms yep uh you got the cross member here you have built-in uh brake line yep. uh areas here these aren't so you're not going to screw in or or no, rivet they're... like you did before you're going to zip tie them these on there zip tie tabs yeah pretty um, pretty pretty sweet it just sits right in that makes it easy there. for maintenance too so you're not having to get the rivet gun out Rill, the whole time Rilling rivets out every single time so you got yeah. the cross arm with the uh, sway bar link brackets correct. here correct um and then you have like i said the gusseted yeah, box that's... uh set up and it's it's fully sealed inside there it's not yeah. open top and um, bottom and then you got you got the uh the plasma cut brackets here that are bent uh and then let's talk about these ball joint connections here so um you know as we see here they're pretty stout 
Right. Um, they're fully welded all the way around, but they're a lot thicker if we look at them than like an OE arm. So here's an OE arm. What's this off of? Uh, this is an XP Pro. XP Pro. Okay. So we're talking about uh, a Pro XP, Razer Pro, Pro XP. Yeah, sure. yeah. Pro yeah. XP. So yeah. that's the base platform that now the Pro R and everything Pro, is based yeah. off. That hardware is different because Correct. of the suspension changes. Yep. But this is off the Pro XP, and you can see it's barely. It's not even as thick as my finger. And if we go over here to the Deviant one, uh, you can see that it's over twice the thickness of my finger. And this is a raw CNC part, right? Right, correct. This is, this is straight off the mill here. Um, and then another cool thing we kind of do, I, I mean, this really helps with the manufacturing process, but I can't help but think that that definitely helps with, uh, you know, strength with the tube in there on that connection. You right, so we're creating, you're creating a bung yeah. for these radiuses to be ra uh, welded to. Right. And uh, as we've seen on some of like the uh, factory OE hardware for like the, the Pro R on the radius rods and stuff, sure, right. those, those bungs are like a hair thick right. and not even welded to, there's a gap between them. No. So they're just a guide for the machine more than anything yeah. else so that they can automate the assembly of the product versus you know fitted welded hand welded right uh, quality parts so these parts here you know they're off they're um inside a little bit for the ball joint they fit factory ball joints as yep. well as all the aftermarket ball joints correct um and so this is cnc'd here in idaho this is all made here in idaho yep. you can see the cnc machine over there uh, that was working this morning um uh but here's some ball joints that they're now offering these are new for you guys right correct these are these are brand new these are like a month old um uh, chromoly shafts on those um so significant they about two times stronger than a stock or uh, stock ball joint but and those are serviceable too these are serviceable so um i mean they come with assembly lube in them but putting a ball joint on i always recommend greasing one if you have a greaser um cool ones about cool part about these is taking them apart you can move this circlip i don't have a pick you need a pick to pull that pin out and then you can pull them apart, pull all the grime and grease and nasty stuff out of there, clean them up, put them back together, grease them, uh, and away you go. And so if these guys start to get sloppy, you can actually put just a little bit of preload on that. Just turn these just down a little bit and they'll stiffen up the ball joint just a little bit. So a factory ball joint that you might get on your unit will be a sealed, non-serviceable ball joint. Yep. And everybody likes to talk about how crappy they are, how fast they wear out. Sure. Um, and it's because honestly, you just can't service them. You can't tighten them up, you can't grease them, you can't yeah. clean them. Where something like this, if you are somebody that's willing to take the time to service your machine, you know, these should last anything outside of, um, out of this world abuse. Um, so these will go into the arms, they'll press down in just like any other ball joint. Yep. Um, and they'll have a C-clip on them and everything uh, to hold them in there but both the upper and lowers have this massive ball joint plate uh that's seeing seed straight out of stock right. um it's and an so that should hold it pretty well on onto the wheel uh hub assembly but then you also have all your um this is our lower bushing kit all your bushing kits and everything so this is all is this a two-piece or a one-piece uh that's a two-piece yeah two-piece bushing there so that's all uhwm right yes yeah so those will be non-squeaky good good bushings to throw in there all and they all just uh they all go in there on the end now these don't have the zerks on them so we need to take the factory zerks off right well uppers so that's another thing we did here um lowers these are these are serviceable lowers okay uh, from the factory you get grease zerks from the factory these upper ones you can't you can grease this one you can't grease this one okay so we put grease zerks in all of them just so you can service them. I mean, okay. lube's your friend, man. Okay. And then uh, they come with the, the bushings and the hardware and everything, right? Yep, correct. And these are grade 10? 10 nines. So you're kind of a metric equivalent of eight. Okay. And so those will go in, those will hold everything in nice and tight. Mm -hmm. um, and then we should be pretty stout. I mean, the, the radius rods we got, I mean, those are freaking baseball bats. So yeah, man. they're uh, pretty stout and I, I have, after seeing what Brent puts these through and all those guys, I have full faith that those are going to last everything I do with them in yeah, the mountains. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he had that upper and lower arm set on his, and I saw that jump, and I, I cringed, <laughs> and then he drove away, and it was all good. I'm yeah. Like, oh, man. He, he might not have felt the same, but he no. drove away. No, he needed to go to the chiropractor after that yeah. one, that's for sure. So we were talking about sway bar links. Um, yeah. You guys are now making sway bar links as well. Correct. And these are, these are super stout. 
um, sway bar links. So these are the same uh, process of CNC work and high end uh, bushings. You got your your offsets there. Um, these are ways just as much as a, an arm. They're so stout. Right. So I'm assuming those won't have any problems. I would hope not. <laughs> Um, so you guys got some new products coming uh, to play here. Uh, yeah. Obviously not the factory arm here, not but this, guy. Uh, this is something special. Why don't you talk about that? Yeah, this is uh, a pro art part. So factory, that front shock fork is a cast aluminum piece. Uh, right. So you can kind of see your casting lines and everything there. So we came up with a, uh, a machined aluminum, built aluminum, uh, 6061. Just a nice machine piece, really kind of strengthen that up. I was watching some of the King of the Hammer stuff, and I mean, whether you wad your machine up or you hit something wrong, I, there's a couple guys breaking those. <laughs> I mean, it's a well. There's a lot of possibilities when you put that much um, yeah. leverage out in the middle of the shock, right? Absolutely. Um, where normally the shock uh, shaft would come down to the actual yeah. bearing, right? Right. Whereas this is putting the bearing in between and then raising that mounting point way up in the air. Right. Um, and we've seen some guys actually you know, sh shear off their shafts um, during big bottom outs right on the right on the fork and leaving the threads, you know, still in there. Um, so this is a fully 6061, you said? Yep. And um, this comes out of a full single solid piece of billet. Yep. And um, so you can see it's scalloped here for the the axle uh, clearance. Yep. And you can see that um, they're they're all within stock spec as far as yeah. um, sizing and alignments and all that stuff. But uh, they're going to be just a way better part because this is cast, which is going to be a low quality material um, that then just gets centered down into the mold. Whereas this is going to be um, high quality material and then CNC the part out of it. Sure. Um, and so up on the top, you can see uh, everything's flush, nice and flat. You got the threads um, ready to go. And um, it's interesting that the cast one's heavier or it feels like it. Right. But this is a stronger part. So oh, yeah. you don't have all those you know, air pockets in your casting, possible flaws, anything like that. Yeah, that's something that people don't realize is that it is possible to have a bad cast and not know oh, it. Absolutely. Because you can have an air pocket right there, right behind your mount yeah. or right here at the thin part Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and have a bad day, so. For sure. Um, okay, what else we got over here? Um, one that, this is what's working on the machine right now is these primary covers. So these are the, the early models, the not the P90X style clutch. Um, this is the, what is that, the 16 turbo, the 16 to 20 uh, XP turbo. So the all the clutch. XP guys are going to be looking at this. Right. Um, this not one. the turbo R guys or the pro R, or I'm sorry, the pro R guys. Those but are coming next. Those are coming next. So this is a fully billet primary cover. So this is your primary. This is your uh, spider that normally goes across it, right? Yeah. So that's your cast piece there. Um, and and then it has a bearing in, pressed inside of it. Right. This and one doesn't have the bearing in it yet. We're we haven't pressed it in this. I just grabbed right. it off the pile. So it's quite a bit different. What's what's the reasoning to go from something like this to a more premium cover like this? Okay, so there's a few few different things on this guy. So so one you're gonna get we put uh, fins on there, move just a little bit more air. Right. So these are these are gonna be moving air through the primary. Right. So, that, so that's kind of a cooling thing. So that's one thing. The other thing is these uh, these mostly on the p90x's but the, i've seen it on uh the the earlier clutches as well this bushing pulls out right it gets too hot this expands and then yeah, it slides it sucks yep. that bushing out so in here we put a step in there we capture the bushing okay so you're capturing the bushing so it can't once you've got it bolted down to the primary yeah, it's not gonna it's never going to slide out right the other thing is we did uh, a captured tower design on here so with your sliders in there and everything, it captures and locks these towers from moving this way. So one of the big problems that people don't realize that they have, and some people do when it explodes, is that these arms over time with, with abuse and heat and, and just cycling through and all that stuff, especially if you're a good big highway guy and you're going for long extended amounts of time and heating this thing up really hot, these arms will deflect outwards. Um, you kind of see the scallops even on this one. Right on the top of the towers. That's been that's from moving. That's from the actual plate moving on top, back and forth as these arms move in and out. Correct. Uh, so having a captured uh, spider on top or plate will uh, prevent that from moving and allow it to stay true. And then your your clutch is less prone to right. exploding. Yeah, mostly the P90X that in that newer style. Um, these will be out for the, the newer Turbo S's and the Pros and the Pro R's and all that. And if you're a guy in the dunes that runs your cover off, 
It never yeah, hurts. Never hurts to have sweet. some some jewelry on your car either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was my uh, my third or fourth talking point on that. It just cool, man. Yeah, leave all the machine marks in it. Don't buff that out. No, that we're, good. we were talking about anodizing them and then engraving. It's like, man, we're gonna leave that. that looks cool. What else we got over here? What's this? Uh, this is a, a desktop sign. What is this? Yeah, dude. Put your business cards here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is a, a chainsaw mount. So, so us guys up here in the northwest that run the trails, especially in the early spring, yes, uh, we like to take chainsaws on the cars because you never know what you're going to hit, and uh, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want to have those something to clear the roadway with. Right. So it's a pretty cool piece. Um, this puck is fully adjustable. You can turn this any way you want it. You can mount it low. You can mount it high. Whichever comes in all the different clamp sizes inch and a half through two inch so you guys make and manufacture your own clamps all so these are all billet clamps as yep. well um but if you look down inside the mount here you can see there's holes for adjustments on whatever angle you need it to so whether you're using it on the c pillar that's at a weird angle or if you're doing it on a cage that's horizontal or whatever you right. can you can adjust it to whatever you want for sure um we do actually sell just these pucks as well so you you show you sell just the mounting hardware as well so if you have your own projects you got going on you yeah, can you, you can do that as well fuel tank on a rotopax mount anything like that same concept get rid of the chainsaw mount you can met right rotopax mount wherever so the way these work if, if you, you guys are down south or whatever don't normally have chainsaws uh the way this works is the chainsaw blade goes into here there's actually you know space in between the halves right and then how does it secure in there as far as keeping so, it on the car just just these uh snubber knobs down here yeah so run, Tightens your, the... run your bar down and then snug these up right good to go so easy in easy out sure. and you don't have to worry about it falling out of your uh razor uh bed so no more bungee cords wow man this is all great stuff i'm looking forward to this i still got to get my primary off the car it, it doesn't want to come off it's uh i think it's permanently welded to the shaft so i think you need um, a bigger hammer <laughs> we're gonna work on that uh we're gonna say goodbye to these little guys uh on the car and we're gonna move to those beefy bads bad boys here and uh look forward to that because uh this beef gives you confidence when you're in the rocks when you're trying to climb when you're in a yeah. stuck moment um, you know, you can get down deep on something or on a hillside and you, and you have to throw your car into a rock or a tree stump or something just to get over the lip and, you know, those make it possible. So, right. or you're just airing out like a loon, man, <laughs> <laughs> or you're doing a Brett Gilliam and sending it to the moon Jeez. and then yeah. getting shoved back down to earth at violent speeds. Yeah. Um, and then I'm looking forward to these. Um, we haven't had a quality set of ball joints in a while, so I'm looking forward to, to reporting back on these, um, um, and seeing how those do. We'll definitely get those greased up and uh we're gonna have pretty much a pretty awesome setup of uh all deviant suspension outside of i think the trailing arm so i think we're all set with that um okay. yeah you guys got anything else in the work you want to share us top secret um like i said those clutch covers for all the other all the other makes and the pro r's and whatnot um we are working on um suspension for the pro r so yeah. arms radius arms plates all that stuff yeah it's coming we haven't forgot about it <laughs> so uh, they're working hard on getting stuff they're a small team that does high quality work and uh you can see from the products down here you know the passion to make a quality product and i appreciate a lot of the small touches they put into stuff and, and the high quality materials and it's all usa made yep. all it's usa sourced uh, and uh, this team here at Devent does a great job so thank you you got it man. i'm gonna find a box for those yeah we'll get you out of here and uh we're gonna get these installed heck yeah shout out to chad Chris, Zach, Nick, happy birthday. Gotcha, buddy. Um, Deviant Race Parts, uh, Hayden, Idaho. Check them out at DeviantRaceParts.com. Uh, you can obviously find the links down below. Check them out, see what they got for your car. Uh, you know, right now is a big time to start looking at uh, upgrading your car uh, with the availability of cars uh, kind of not existing at the moment. And, uh, you know, parts and stuff getting hard to find. Companies like this are your bread and butter for getting things upgraded and fix. So check them out, Deviant. And uh, until next time, guys, peace.